In the last video, you got a first introduction to hardware description languages. One of these is VHDL. So how do we have to use it? Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. In this video, we will go through the necessary steps of designing a hardware model using VHDL. But before we start, let me just give you a brief introduction to this hardware description language. VHDL is an abbreviation for Very High Speed Integrated Circuit Hardware Description Language. It has been published as an IEEE standard in 1987. The latest version was defined in 2019. VHDL is a well-known language in the semiconductor industry to design complex digital circuits. I will explain the main language constructs of VHDL using a very simple example. Let's just des design a standard AND gate having two inputs, in one and in two, and one output, let's call it AND OUT. Below you can also see the truth table of such an AND gate. First, we have to define the entity. The entity in VHDL is the description of the interface between a design and its external environment and also declares the design name. In this section, you define how the model should communicate with other components in its environment. You can define ports for input and output signals and also parameter values called generics. So let's start designing. We first have to use the keyword entity. Afterwards, we declare the design name and add the keyword is. Now we can define the signals for our model using port and parentheses. Our first input port's name is in1. So we first type the name, then a column and the keyword in to declare the port as an input port. Finally, we have to set the width of the input port. In this case, we only have one bit as input, so we use the type bit. The line has to be finished with a semicolon. The same way we define the first input port, we can set the second input port in two. Now we are only missing the output port. This one is also defined like the input ports, except that we have to use the keyword out instead of in. The description of the interface is completed by the keyword and, and again the name of the design. And don't forget the semicolon at the end. Now we have some kind of black box. We know the interface of the design, but there is no definition of the behavior or the internal structure of our model. This is done within the architecture definition. The architecture assigned to an entity describes the internal relationship between input and output ports. But it only describes the expected functionality of the circuit without any direct indication as to the hardware implementation. Let's come back to our example. We first have to use the keyword architecture and then give it a name. Since we will describe the behavior of it, I just call it behavioral. After this, we need the keyword off and link the architecture to the entity, so in this case, and two. Before we can start to describe the behavior, we have to use the keyword is. The body of the architecture always starts with the keyword begin. Now we have to define how the output port and out is set to a value. This is done by the assignment operator, which is defined by this arrow. Then we use the logical AND operation to implement the AND gate. Finally, we close the architecture description by using the keyword AND 
and the name of our architecture as well as a semicolon. That's it. Now we have designed an AND gate, which could be implemented on a chip. Besides putting a behavioral description in the architecture, the function of it can also be described in a structural manner using the component construct. It declares a virtual design entity interface that may be used in a component instantiation. A component represents an entity architecture pair and specifies a subsystem which can be instantiated in another architecture leading to a hierarchical specification. The declaration of the component has to be done before its instantiation. Let's just do a simple example which instantiates the end gate we've designed before. Just imagine that we want to design a logical block using an AND gate. As you can see, I already set up the entity description of such a logic block. Again, we start with the architecture keyword, its name and the corresponding design name. Now we have to declare the component we want to use in the architecture. As stated before, this has to be done before the instantiation of the end gate. Therefore, we will declare it right after the first line using the component keyword, then the name of the design and the is keyword. Afterwards, we need to declare the ports of our component. This is done by using the port keyword. Within the parentheses, we list all the inputs and outputs of our design using the same keywords as we used when we defined the entity. The whole block is finished with the AND component keyword and the semicolon. Now that we have declared our component, we can think about the body of our architecture using the AND gate. Right after the begin keyword, we want to instantiate the gate. Therefore, we give the component an arbitrary name and after the colon we tell which component we want to instantiate. In this case, it's the N2. Afterwards, we have to map some signals to the port of the entity. This can be done after using the port map keyword and within the parentheses. Each signal has to be mapped to another signal. Therefore, we have to use the assignment statement again. The output port of the AND gate can be connected to the output port of the design which is called Y in this case. Finally, we end the description of the architecture. And that's it. Alright, let's do a short recap on what I've shown you in this video. We first designed an AND gate by defining the interfaces of the design before writing a behavioral description of it. Finally, we instantiated the AND gate within another design and connected the ports. With these few essential keywords I've shown you in this tutorial, you will already be able to implement some basic digital circuits on your own using VHDL.